Will everybody know how much of a pouty butt you've been? You know, let everybody know? Dude is just on one. Yep. Somebody's on one. We're packing up the house. I can't do nothing about it, son. So I'm organizing the garage. I um, actually might even get out of here before the first. So I got a bunch of shit to do, and one of those things is I gotta sell all this workout equipment that we bought, which we cannot take with us. We haven't been using it either. It's very clear if you look at me. But I've not been working out. But I'm gonna get there. We just gotta go to the mountains. So I have all these clothes to go through. There's two more bins back there. Selling this stuff. I still gotta go through this stuff. Bunch of shit upstairs. My art tables are getting sold. My toolbox is getting sold. Literally almost everything. This is emptying out. There is a mystery bag drop, but it is not huge. Friends and family is probably gonna eat that alive. Just being honest. I'm over Vegas and Chris really just needs my help. I'm gonna be working at the shop full time, which is a big change for me being in a tattoo shop full time, but the shop's only open from two to eight, five days a week. So it's pretty manageable for me and I think I'll be able to do everything else I'm doing. Omar's pouting. But yeah, a lot of clothes to go through. Like I made a lot of clothes, I've kept a lot of clothes. It's okay, Bubba. You're about to go to the best place for a dog. What's up, Omar? I'm being funny. Is it just all the commotion that's got you acting weird? Nope. Waste time is over, huh? You nervous? Stuff has moved? People keep coming to the house and picking stuff up? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's gonna be okay. But still itches though. That's still a constant, huh? There's shit everywhere. I got Facebook marketplace. Oh, Jesus. The fact that I've had to get back on Facebook just to enter the marketplace seems like some sort of metaphor. I don't know, it's just the most ridiculous marketplace in the world and I hope to never go to it again. I got the new iPhone. I accidentally ordered the non-Max version, which I don't know what to do. I want the Max, I guess, because I'm used to it. Change is also good. They're basically identical. I might just be being a bitch. It seems like a bitch move to like return it in with the max. It seems like a bitch move. So I'll probably keep it or I might just turn into a bitch. I don't know. I'm trying to leave tomorrow. Omar is acting like he's sick, but he's not sick. He's just nervous. Abner doesn't know what the fuck is going on. He doesn't care. I've ordered a snowboard jacket, I'm getting ready. That's 686. I ordered a board, new bindings, and we're selling basically everything we have. Taking a bath, a fucking bath. Well, most of it. So let that be a lesson to you on value. When you move, if you sell shit, you will lose your ass. We got just the squat rack, which has been harder to sell than I thought. The pull-up bar, RIP. A food mechanism machine that I bought that I didn't need. Trying to sell the computer monitors has been actually really fucking hard. The green screen thing, random shit like spray paint, random crap, but uh, mostly we're getting through it. The podcast room is taken down. We're gonna keep the computer because I'm getting an office uh, in the mountains to run the brand out of, so we'll have an office on either computer. Here you are, sulking away. Oh, my papa. It's okay. It's okay. It's gonna be all right, bubs. I promise. I got left, basically. It's not bad. Omar, do you have anything to say from your perch for the last time? No. He's gonna be fine. You wanna come? You wanna leave? You wanna leave Las Vegas? Go to the mountains? He's leaving Las Vegas. Let's go play in the snow. Come on. Are you ready? Start playing Saweetie and crashing through all this fucking pack. So you can play Saweetie? Oh, like on the. Yeah, please wait for me to leave. Before you play. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not needed while I'm here. That's my time. Abner, come with me. That's my Alex time. is staying behind for how long? I have Two to, days. I have to keep track because. My goal is just one week. He'll be there the day after, or a couple days after Peter's service. Okay, we're, we're gonna see. I have the camera over here still monitoring your activities. Oh, good. Just to make sure. Come on, boys. Go.
Look at this luxury cabin you get to have. Wow. Lucky boys. It's going to be fun time. First charge, huh, Abner? No. Yeah. Omar's acting like a little fucking wuss. You getting a wuss under there? First stop. Abner, we made it to the second charging station. How's our boy doing? Just panting away? <laughs> For no reason. You're fine. Maybe if you got out of the sun. Hey. Hey. Maybe if you got out of the sun, you feel better. You're fine. I have no idea. I think I've been here for like one, two, four or five days. I'm not really sure. So I'm here. Alex is finishing up and packing the rest, throwing stuff away. She's honestly packing the truck and driving the truck. She's a gangster. So shout out to Alex. Hopefully is going to be here middle of next week, but by the weekend at the latest. Peter's memorial was yesterday, so pretty peaceful. It was nice to talk to people and share stories, um, but it was also pretty overwhelming you know I've been pretty good for the last month as far as like my emotions go but yesterday like after everybody left and t I tattooed a little bit yesterday too just to kind of take my mind off of the reality of the fact that like it's final you know it's been final but it's just it's so surreal you know like everything that just happened and it all happened so quickly and like literally a couple of months ago I'm like dancing around with the idea of moving somewhere completely different now we're here and now I'm working at Peter's shop and it's great it's cool it's a lot for me to get used to again you know I ha you guys know I haven't really been in a shop full-time in a long time and dancing around with the idea of doing my own thing and this all just sort of came together at once. It means a lot to me to carry on what he started. It means a lot to me to keep that shop open or help keep that shop open for him. That's really like what drove me just to make the decision to just come here. Uh, plus Alex's dad offering us um, the condo to live in, which is like pretty clutch. Cause if we had to find a place to live up here right now, it'd be impossible. There's nothing for rent. There's nothing available really. And if it is, it's a two bedroom for fucking four grand. Um, bittersweet, maybe serendipitous feeling. I don't know, but everything's just kind of culminating all at once. 10 years ago, we were up here, you know, and I wanted to move here 10 years ago and we could never make it work out. And now we've figured it out in the most fucking roundabout zigzag way possible. It's been a lot to process, but also just my own personal feelings about life. Like things have changed so much since this vlog started at my wits end with basically social media. I can't read random people's thoughts. Uh, being in a city like Las Vegas where just about everybody's fake, everybody's just trying to get to the next fancy fucking thing they can show off. And it's all just like, it's just not my scene. You know, it's like so commercialized and it's so just surrounded around 
excess, you know, and I just, it's just fucking wore me down. I don't want to be there at all, and being here in nature has been like, a f like, my whole mood has changed. My entire fucking perspective on life, even though I'm going through losing friends, we had some more friends pass away in the last couple of weeks, so it's just been like non- fucking stop. You almost become numb to it. I remember this happening when my grandmother passed away. My second grandmother passed away shortly thereafter. And I was a little kid, but I remember like not crying the second time because I was like still processing the first one. You can only take so much, a lot of death lately and it's just been crazy. But for me, after the sadness, uh, what death does for me is it really makes me focus on life. What it is I'm doing um, that's not serving me. And a lot of things that I've been doing <coughs> don't serve me anymore haven't served me in a while and it's honestly sometimes i look back at like the sneaker stuff and i'm i feel ashamed it got me somewhere i got an audience out of it but at the same time like i feel bad maybe some people like i know that like peter didn't understand it like he thought i was off the deep end on uh consuming which i was but i was being rewarded for it so it kept feeding it and it was like i didn't really realize at the time that i was like playing this money round and now that i'm out of it and i look back and I look at it, I'm just like, man, my head was kind of in the clouds. I don't know, like, it's just a weird thing. I mean, that's hindsight for you. And I don't wish I did anything else because I love that I, that I have an audience. I love that I'm able to do clothing and still travel and tattoo people all over. I love everything that's happened. But when I look back on my own life and I look at this, like, couple of years of just um, where people get the idea, I guess, that I'm not, or I don't have any more depth you know other than sneakers it gets me in my ego and it gets me kind of like man that was really a weird time for you an addiction that was coming back which i think i acknowledged but an addiction on sneakers got hooked again i relapsed on the fucking sneaks um but yeah it's just a super crazy thing you know, i've been reflecting a lot just on life and um just what i want to do and where i want to be and like up here in the mountains is incredible like have never experienced a fall up here and so right now currently the leaves are changing it's so dude frisco is beautiful fucking awesome like you see every day it's different it's gone from green to this fire red to golden yellow to browns like just walking around is fucking dope. I don't understand about myself because I used to make fun of people when I was younger who would come to Asheville to see the leaves change. I'd tattoo people, they'd be like, oh, we're here to see the leaves change. I'd be like, what are you talking about? That's crazy. Came all the way here to see leaves change. But now I get it. And it seems like symbolic to me. A lot of weird supernatural shit has been happening uh, since Peter passed. But also the obvious change that's happening, you know, like he has gone and now I'm here, which is really fucking sad for me. But uh, it's like this total transition and just watching the seasons go with it is just, I don't know, I guess emotional. I guess like it makes me feel something i don't even know what it makes me feel it just makes me feel more alive i guess it makes me feel like the world isn't i don't know it almost makes me believe in magic life and magic is just about what you believe in so i choose to believe that there's a uh, a new energy field around me and uh just headed forward in life so um that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna get back to a normal schedule. It's just been super fucking hard. Packing, moving, traveling, the dogs. Omar pulled every trick in the book to try to get me to take him to the vet. Everything he can do to like get me to almost freak out, but he's fine. Both the dogs are good. We're going on walks every day. Abner, come here. We've been at the shop all week, tattooing people. Um, you guys know I normally just book appointments. I open up my schedule and then I close it. Well now, I'm doing my own customers and people who want big stuff, but to help service the shop, I'm also doing walk-ins again, which I haven't done in a long time. So it's cool and I really realized too that I miss I miss talking to people face to face and interaction with people and giving them something that makes them super happy. Like all of that shit means so much to me. And I think I took a lot of that stuff for granted. And I now have just circled back around and I have, you know, I have both. I have this online community that I can talk to and I share my life with. And I have people who come and get tattooed and share their lives with me. And, you know, a lot of times I generate a design out of what they're sharing. And it's just you're giving people this thing they can't do for themselves and it's just really cool and it's really cool to help this whole situation to me is makes me just feel good and uh like i said as as, as sad as it's been it's like the light after the dark you know it, it feels like this is where i need to be this is where i should be um 
I feel super comfortable. I just, I'm looking forward to just doing all kinds of cool shit up here. Snowboarding, we got two ski passes. I got Icon and Epic. Bought a new snowboard and that's it. I'm not buying anything else. Like I'm done buying shit. This house is small. We have reduced a lot of the shit we own, we no longer own. Like we got rid of a lot of stuff and we just plan on being a lot more minimal moving forward because We've just created more work for ourselves. Our house is huge, you know? Our Vegas house is enormous. It's so hard to keep up with, especially with how busy we both are. And running a brand and all this stuff. I think I'm gonna be a lot more happy of a person. And I also think being up here is gonna help me disengage from social media, which kind of sucks in some ways because I really like the community that we have. And I like talking to people and making jokes and tweets, but you no longer are safe to scroll on social media. And the real thing about that is is you're not scrolling for any reason. It's no different than making fun of Earn for Fortnite. You're scrolling because when you see something you like, whether it's a meme or a joke or a sneaker or what you want or any uh, NFT that you might buy, a stock that you hear is gonna go up, all that shit creates dopamine in your brain. So you're scrolling to find more dopamine. And what is happening is now, especially with like Twitter algorithms and Instagram still, like what's happening is, is you're being force fed stuff that you didn't even really sign up for. You, you know, you might have followed someone and now they're going through a breakup. Now they're retweeting this thing because they're in their fucking feelings. They've been drinking all night. And it's like, that shit's fucking whatever. When it's like your close friends, because you can call them and be like, yo, stop being a bitch on the internet. You can never really scroll anymore because you are going to be met with all this darkness looking for something that's also not really real. Like that dopamine hit's not helping you. It's gonna balance back out and then you're gonna feel sad and that's why you keep scrolling because you want more. And I just, dude, it's just exhausting. And it's probably always been bad and I maybe haven't noticed, but now like I feel like post pandemic or lockdown, whatever, it's just gotten way worse. Politically, people are just off the rails. Like I don't care anymore what people think about things. Like I don't need to define everybody, like whether they're um, good or bad based on how they've been brainwashed to think their political opinion fucking matters. Like I don't give a fuck either way and you guys know this and I'm really, really sick of watching people argue because people keep dying. Fucking breaking relationships. It's like you're doing that and then nobody knows when you're gonna go. So you're really letting the powers that be hit you against your friends and family and you're really letting it fucking rob you of the quality of life. You know, like the politicians don't even hear about any of this shit. The, the system doesn't hear about about, you know, the falling outs, 20 year friendships that fall out because again, the algorithm fed you different fucking media that you ingested and you believed based on a confirmation bias. Like just, you gotta unplug. And that's what I'm doing. Like I'm up here, I'm unplugging. I'm still gonna upload my vlog. I'm still gonna tweet when I tweet. Like, I'm still gonna keep things kind of regular. I'm just talking about my own habits. I'm sick, I don't wake up anymore and pick up my phone. It used to be my first thing. Now I take at least 30 minutes before I pick up my phone. Of course, it's gonna text right now. I go outside first, I get sunlight. I'm trying to reconnect. And then, you know, just trying to like make more art, like what I've been trying to do for years. I'm looking for an office so that we can run the brand completely out of the office and hopefully it has a studio space so I can also paint. And then, um, yeah, other than that, it's just leisure activities. Snowboard, ski, bike, I don't ski, Alex skis bike. Walk the dog, Credible just walking them. Omar's so fat right now, he's like 10 pounds overweight. So he's gotta lose weight. I'm fat right now, I gotta lose weight. And it's not even like I need to go on a fucking diet. I just need to watch what I'm eating again because things got so stressful and crazy for me. Uh, basically, essentially, as soon as I brought Jay home, that had me able to focus. This lack of focus is really like boned me out. And then that lack of focus getting hit with all this other stuff that like just sent me into this tailspin in some weird roundabout way refocused me and I had to go through all this pain and through all this like sadness and guilt and regret and all this stupid shit that I had to go through but I had to go through it and I had to process like the reality of my life so that I can move forward and be happy or, like I'm really happy that I sell art and clothing and it, like, it does really well. And it's fucking amazing. Like I'm working on a lookbook right now. It's going up tonight for friends and family. You guys are great. Like, you guys support like, cr like crazy. I love it. It's provided me a life. I mean, I had a good life with tattooing only, but this provides me honestly a more focused but relaxed ability to even tattoo. When you're not worried about only making money from one thing, you can relax and it's really been great for me. Really blessed for all the things that I have. I'm blessed that I get to stay in this house. I mean, some people might look at this as a downgrade because we're in a much smaller house, but dude, 
I look at this as an upgrade. I want a smaller place. I'm really looking forward to getting back to just vlogging and a normal schedule and like getting into the swing of things. It's just taking a little bit. Uh, that's just life sometimes. And honestly, if I've been vlogging the last month, you guys have been like, this is just boring chaos. Yeah, so I think that covers everything. I don't really know what else there is to cover. Ern's in fucking Italy eating cheese like crazy. Apparently there's a vlog coming from Ern. I haven't got anything yet. I'm assuming he's gonna give it to me when he gets home. I don't really know, we'll, we'll see. But he, but he did say that there's uh, footage coming. Hetty's store is about to open in Vegas. Yeah, that's pretty much the update. I don't know. It's Sunday. I'm not at the shop today. I'm going to go ride my bike and I'm going to come here. I'm going to cook. I'm going to eat. I'm going to chill out. I'm going to smoke some fucking weed because we're in Colorado. We got the good shit again. I don't know why we moved. Well, I do know why we moved. I enjoyed the experience of dystopian Vegas. I did, but I'm glad that it's over and I'm really, 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 really stoked for the fucking future. I think we're having a lot of fun. You know, drop some LBs, just having that fun. Get to a place where I just feel fucking content and just, again, get focused and relaxed and just start creating more and just, you know, be more happy with myself and care less about the world. I cannot live my life assuming I'm gonna be here to see the end, you know? Because again, I've had at least five friends die this year, at least. And they all stressed out about things they never saw. You know, they, they got upset about things they never witnessed and may never happen. And it's just such a waste of time and it's a trap. The internet is a real trap. You talk about a trap and I'm talking about the trap. Like it is, it's the trap. It's a trap. You stay in if you want and you can dance it up however you like. You can manage it. Cool. I used to be able to fucking navigate it. Great. But these days it's OD fucking negative and I just... I really think the internet is gonna turn in to a place nobody goes, only to shop, and then eventually people are only gonna really associate with each other in person again. Force ourselves back into face-to-face -face contact because the internet is so fucking toxic. That's my theory for the future. Yeah, man, Colorado, we're here. I'm stoked. Frisco, bike ride.